You're watching the news summary on Kazakh TV, review of the major news of the week from Kazakhstan. Jana Sagandikova, good evening. The past week was full of events for both the government and entrepreneurs in the regions. Vice ministers traveled with official visits across the country to meet with business leaders and to hold various meetings. The national company signed a number of agreements with manufacturers to develop local content. Delivery of products was heavily negotiated, among other key issues. And these are not all as more measures to support the business were undertaken last week. But let's study each of them closely. During the working trip to the East Kazakhstan region, the first Deputy Prime Minister, Bakijan Sagintaev, outlined that support for domestic producers is one of the main directions of the anti-crisis policy. Last year, national companies have purchased goods totaling 93 billion tenge. The demand has increased almost twice compared to the volume of the previous years. Eight memoranda have been signed in order to develop further partnership. The terms of supply of components for car building, valves, cement and electrical equipment were considered as well. The total amount of transactions reached 75 billion tenge. In addition, regional enterprises have signed an agreement that fully guarantees job placement. The government will provide all the necessary measures to support domestic producers, but I want to ask everyone to be responsible for their work, as this gives stability to the whole region, creates jobs and raises wages. Of course, this is not an easy situation for us, but if we join efforts, we will achieve good results. Bakijan Sagintaev also held a meeting in Pavlodar. A similar memoranda of procurement of goods, works and services between national companies and city-forming enterprises of the region totaling 128 billion tenge were concluded. The state takes all the necessary measures. The government has already identified 80 large enterprises that were included in the action plan to support and increase the local content. In addition, national companies will join this work. The deputy prime minister unveiled the plans to support the domestic producers, which have been developed by the government during the, his visit to the Karaganda region. 47 memoranda totaling 57 billion tenge were signed during a meeting on the development of industrial potential of the region with the participation of Berdebeck Saparbaev. The national companies and core enterprises with producers in the region signed documents on cooperation on the issues of local content development. Regional Akimat, employers and trade unions have agreed to assist in the area of compliance of the labor rights and employment of Karaganda residents. A plan was developed to support our producers and provide them with preferential tariffs for electricity, transportation and provision of local raw materials. The most important thing is to support local producers in order to increase local content and preserve jobs. Labor rights and guarantees of workers in the Jambal region must be respected, and the production process has to go up as instructed by Berdebeck Saparbaev during his visit to the region. Additionally, 17 memoranda on cooperation in the field of labor rights of workers, as well as for the development of local content, were also signed. Each region needs to know their product. Today, in times of crisis, the main task is to produce their products with no foreign acquisitions. For this purpose, these products must be competitive and meet the necessary standards. In addition, 79 enterprises of the region plan to sign memoranda on stabilization of production processes between the administration, employers and trade unions. Today, there are more than 5,500 enterprises in the Jambel region. Nearly half of them have already signed a collective agreement. The Food Corporation cancelled fines and penalty fees for the farmers in the northern part of the country who suffered last year's poor harvest. The corporation started financing loans to buy seeds for the spring campaign. The senior manager of the Department of Resource Management at the Food Corporation expressed considerable support for Cost and I. Watch our next story for more details. Farming can be dicey. One can never know when one can suffer losses. The harvesting of grain last fall was disrupted by rains. Farmers lost 114,000 tons of seeds. This is more than a fifth of what will be required in the spring. We are hopeful because the agriculture ministry reacted so quickly to the lack of seeds and came up with the program. The Food Corporation has allocated 1.8 billion tenge to the Kostanai region from its own resources to finance the purchase of grain. Now the terms of the refund were reviewed and the interest rate was reduced from 10 to 5 percent per annum. The villagers started massive renegotiations of contracts. People have confidence in these measures. 70,000 tons out of the 114,000 still needs to be purchased. Therefore, sowing will proceed 
as scheduled. We are waiting for approvals for the received applications and there are payments already so the agricultural producers can acquire the seeds for themselves. Will the problem be completely resolved? I think yes. The bad weather conditions affected not only the seeds, farmers took loans in the amount of over 5 billion tenge, a tenth part of which has not yet been returned. Since January, the indebted farmers were obliged to pay fines. There are already about 50 such agricultural producers. The Food Corporation has also agreed to extend the term of the loans. The 10% was cancelled. Also, the Food Corporation decided to cancel the penalty fee that equaled to 0.1% for each day of delay in December and to cancel the interest rate on the penalty as well. The seemingly small percentage has amounted to about 30 million tenge in write-off penalties. Meanwhile, the corporation tries to minimally sustain losses and to give full support to agricultural producers. The head of the Atro branch of one of Kazakhstan's banks, Lazat Turispekova, has been sentenced for embezzlement. The next seven years and a half she will have to spend behind bars. She was found guilty of embezzlement of funds using her official position. Turisbekova persuaded one of the customers who wanted to buy an apartment for cash to apply for a mortgage. To avoid paying the interest to the bank, the customer decided to pay the loan in the amount of 17 million tenge in advance and handed the money to the head of the institution. Turisbekova admitted in court that she had not deposited the money in the bank but spent 17 million tenge on her own needs. <laughs> The court sentenced the former head of the bank to seven and a half years in a general regime prison. The Regional Board of Appeals has not made any changes to the sentence. The property of the convicted will be confiscated. A bank manager is accused of fraud in Pavladar. The young man stole several million tenge from the employer. He used the long-time unused customers' accounts. The first victim of the fraud was the 60-year-old man who didn't have any cash withdrawals for about three years. After having forget an ID card, the fraudster got a bank card under the client's name and transferred all the money to the account. Later, he withdrew 951,000 tenge from an ATM machine. In a similar way, he managed to rob three other accountants. The perpetrator has been already detained and confessed. The total amount of the stolen funds is about 5 million tenge. Criminal proceedings have been initiated against the bank employee under the article fraud. The woman that miraculously survived in the M2 chat crash in the Jambal region has successfully undergone five surgeries. The doctors of the first municipal hospital have spent a few days in the operating room and managed to save the life of the 29-year-old. The girl received several fractures and a concussion. She is in a stable condition now and will undergo rehabilitation treatment. On January the 20th, the M2 chat crashed while landing in the fog in the area of the mine Chadarkul in the Jambal region. The sole survivor who managed to call the rescue services, SM Chaikmetova, was transported to Astana in a critical condition. Without bandages and antiseptics, Kazakh scientists have developed a biological bandages and now it will be much easier to treat burns and deep wounds. The doctor tried it out on 30 patients and they are sure that their invention will become a new step in the transplantation development. Sinograft is the name of the invention. This bioplastic bandage helps healing wounds and burns in a short period of time. It went through all stages of a pilot research and has already been in use during surgeries. It helped Anwar Ilakinov from Jarkand, who was hospitalized with a burnt right leg. There are two types of transportation of tissues, from human to human and from animal to human. Currently, we lack donor resources. Not all people agree to donate their tissues and not all relatives agree to donate the organs of the deceased. Therefore, at present, a xenogenic transplantology is developing from an animal to a human. The development is already underway for mass production. Physicians say that the next step in the development of transportation is to create a bank of human tissues. 167 billion tenge will be invested to improve Kazakhstan's airports. These funds will be spent on major projects for the reconstruction of runways to increase the security level and improvement of airfield infrastructure at the airports of Astana, Kazilardar, Petropavlovsk and Kostanai. In addition, new passenger terminals will be built at the airports in Astana, Shimkent and Kazilardar. Today, there are 11 state airports in Kazakhstan. Their development and modernization is one of the key points of the newly drawn new economic policy. During 2015, it is planned to complete the development and implementation of corporate standards of safety, security and quality of the service. 
All this will be developed using international experience, which will be the most important basis for the passage of the ISAGO public transport certification in 2015-2017. The capabilities of the Lancer 4 aircraft were demonstrated in Uralsk. The plane was assembled in West Kazakhstan. It is a four-seater light plane used as an air taxi worldwide. The plant purchased the main cover units and elements of metal structures required for assembling the plane, as well as the instruction manual and graphic materials at the American company KIT. The airplane is made of carbon and composite materials and has a 750 horsepower engine. The plane's range is 5 hours at the height of 3,000 meters, and it flies as fast as 400 kilometers per hour. According to company's management, this is a pilot technological project which is not designed for commercial purposes. The project cost is 800,000 US dollars, and if it brings success, plans to continue works, including assembling other models, will be seriously considered. It took a long time to resolve technical issues, provision of the plane with modern air, navigation equipment, radio and electronic devices. We have developed the fuel system independently and estimated that 80% of the assembled plane was Kazakhstani content, taken into account the labor. Mass trucks will be assembled in Kazakhstan as agreed by the representatives of the Minsk plant ministries and the embassy of Belarus during a visit to a car assembly plant in Semei. The estimated launch day is July the 1st. The cost of the project is more than half a billion tenge. These funds will go for the reconstruction of factory building and purchase of new equipment. It is planned to assemble a thousand cars per year and as many trailers. The project was implemented within the Eurasian Economic Union. In particular, local experts will be trained at the Minsk plant. It is expected to employ more than 100 people. Yes, we understand that this project is interesting and challenging. At the same time, we understand that we are in a period of global crisis, but we are real people, and we know that after the recession, there is a peak, as our head of state always says. I think that over time, our project will find its rightful place. This is one of the most promising projects in terms of ensuring the country's needs in this type of heavy vehicles. This project had been discussed for a long time for the, by the parties. Its technical and economic components were under discussion as well. Today, the machine building plant occupies more than 40,000 square meters. In addition, there are warehouses and an administrative building. And we plan to organize the first batch of trucks on that territory by June. Exactly 89 days remaining until the mass celebration of the 70th anniversary of the great victory in World War II. The president has instructed the heads of relevant departments to pay appropriate attention and take care of every war veteran and home front laborer. The Nuritan party held a meeting with representatives of government agencies, non-governmental sector and regions. The participants discussed a complex of measures for upcoming celebrations in the country. Noraton continues its ambitious project to help the veterans. Last year, volunteers have studied the living conditions of more than 5,000 witnesses of these desperate years. The country's main political party coordinates solutions to all existing issues. On behalf of the leader of the party, Noraton conducts a comprehensive work to support the veterans and elderly and is carrying out the patriotic education activities. There is a special project aimed at assisting war and labor veterans. About 4.7 billion tenge was allocated from the national budget to support the veterans, including for payment of benefits, medical expenses, payment of treatment and spas and clinics. The housing issue is on a special control. The president has instructed that all veterans should be provided with housing until March the 20th. This is mandatory. Last year, Noratan has restored data about 531 heroes of the Soviet Union and more than 124 holders of the Order of Glory. A website dedicated to the great patriotic war, kaharman.kz, will be launched by the Victory Day on May 9. All unique archival documents, photos and videos about the heroes of war will be published on the website. Exactly 71 years ago, Leningrad was liberated from the Nazi blockade. This date has been marked in history as the greatest humanitarian disaster and as a symbol of dedication and strength of the human spirit. Every year on this day, witnesses of those terrible years gather in the park of 28 Monfield of God's men to honor the memory of the fallen during the long 872 days. Residents of the besieged Leningrad bring flowers, moving speeches and some spiritual unity to the eternal flame each year. 
89 witnesses of those terrible years who are still living in Almaty stay close to this day and even establish their own organization. They stood up tragically, heroically and courageously for 872 days of blockade. And on January 27, 1944, Hitler's plan to destruct the city of Leningrad was interrupted. And in a secret document, he was saying that they absolutely did not need the settlement and wanted to wipe off the face of the earth, the city of Leningrad. But the fascist invaders failed. Most of the people who gathered in the park of 28 Panfil of Guardsmen were children during the siege. They remember the constant bombing, losing the loved ones, constant hunger, and the terrible truth that in spite of thousands of the fallen in cold and fear, the city of Leningrad tried to continue a regular city life. It was the pillar that kept the faith in people. Yolanta Yermikbaeva remembers that for the new year, her mother decorated spruce branches and took her even to music school. We used to come to the hospital and perform there because I went to a music school and I was playing a polka. The injured welcomed us very warmly. We had a girl that had a very pleasant little voice and she sang songs named Dark Nights, Light. In general, of course, we were very pleased that we brought joy to those in trouble. The witnesses recollected that a few months later, some people were so weak that they couldn't even get down to the basement during air attacks. And at the same time, adults were working very hard and teenagers and children sewed pouches and knitted socks, everything for the battlefield, everything for the victory. The blockade has claimed the lives of nearly half a million people about 420,000 residents and almost 70,000 soldiers. A book about the border guards who died in a plane crash in 2012 was presented in Almaty, and 72 jet crash claimed the lives of 27 Kazakh border defenders in Shimkent. The book titled The Team Gone Into Heaven contains more than 600 pages. The publication contains valuable historical materials about the formation of the border service of Kazakhstan in the first two decades of independence. As the authors say, the Book of Memories can be used as a textbook for students of the Border Academy. It was handed to the families of the deceased guards and friends in the service. Many were anticipating this book. The relatives of the fallen guards were crying when I handed it to them. It was an unforgettable tragedy for the nation. 27 people were killed. They have the right to remain in our memories. A book written by Professor and Doctor of Historical Sciences Bereket Karibayev, History of the Kazakh Khanate, has been presented in Tiras. The monograph, published on the threshold of the 550th anniversary of Kazakh Khanate, features the basic milestones of its creation and development. In addition, he conducted a great research on ethnic and political background, the course and periods of Khanate formation. The book is based on materials taken from the Eastern sources. More than 80 written materials have been used. In the book, they are grouped in by language, social, regional principles. I relied on a variety of medieval written sources in different languages, materials of oral literature of Turkic and Kazakh peoples. The book also presents stories and legends about Batyrs. The Museum of Literature and Art of the Akmola region contains the rare book of Kozakmedi Sowiz certifications, the unique publication found among the 12 manuscripts in Arabic in the museum's archives. The specialists say there are only three of these books in the world. These days, the museum is preparing for the 550th anniversary of the Kazakh Khanate and turns the pages of the archives again. The museum contains more than 9,000 exhibits, including numerous unique ones. One of them is a bowl of warriors. Its history goes back to the ancient times. Another item is the copper flask for water. It was found during excavations in Yermintau district and associated with the name of Bogenbay Batyr. The rare exhibit is five centuries old. It is a five-liter bowl made of wood. A cup is made of the birch shell fungus and has been handed to us by the eighth generation of the Waliev's family. According to one version, Kanai B himself liked this bowl very much. A Shimkent residence owns a collection of dolls from all over the world. Dozens of rack, plastic, porcelain, miniature representatives of different nationalities barely fit on a bookshelf. The former teacher of the Russian language and literature, Paulina Brenner, has had this hobby for about eight years. Now her apartment looks like the assembly of peoples of the world.
пожалуйста, вот из Мальты. This one is from Malta, this one from Vienna, an Austrian. This one is Pisa, an Italian girl. This is from Switzerland, and this one's from France. Sorry. Вот это Франция. Next to the French doll, there is a Russian one named Alenushka, as well as dolls from Portugal, the Netherlands, and Greece. Dolls are brought from all over the world right into this apartment. The 75-year-old Polina Brenner owns the collection. The retiree loves her hobby. I fell in love with my dolls. I cannot even imagine this room without them. I have no time to grow old. I forget that I have a headache or I have something to do because I spend all the time with my dolls. Dozens of rag, plastic, porcelain dolls barely fit on her bookshelf. The woman says that this is a miniature of People's Assembly of Kazakhstan. Paulina remembers the story of each one of them. Elko gave me this one. These first are Dutch ones. This was my first trip to Holland, and they're still here. I didn't even unpack them. There are also the new ones from the CIS countries, Russian, Buryat, Chuvash, Uzbeks and Turkmens. The woman says she will continue adding more dolls to her collection and her students will help her do so. From the collection, they are very beautiful. These dolls represent almost all the nations of the world. However, the owner says that the beauty in the Kazakh national costume remains her favorite one. Polina Berner is glad that she lives in a country where harmony and accord between nationalities prevail. The Astana Opera performed in the Karlo Filice Theater in Genoa with the ballet Spartacus. Tickets for all shows were sold out long before the arrival of the Kazakh troupe. Italy has welcomed the ballet from Astana for the first time. The local theater Carlo Felice is almost 200 years old. This is one of the largest opera houses in Europe. The performance stirred interest among the audience. It has never been shown in Genoa. <laughs> Dorjan Tabaldi played the role of the strong and fearless Spartacus. For the Italians, it is quite difficult to play the Roman hero. Tabaldi had to study literature in order to play the role. I thank the stars that it happened. To date, I still remain the youngest Spartacus. This age boundary has not been crossed yet. Kazakhstan's ballet dancers have presented an unusual performance of the well-known plot. Until the end of the first act, the audience was silent, but then they burst into applause. Your theory is already ahead of ours by its structure and technology, but we have a great scene for the ballet performances, and now thousands of Italians have the opportunity to assess the skills of your artists. The next day, people came to the theater, which is in the city center, and said they, they were crying during the play because our artists conveyed so many natural emotions that profoundly moved the spectators. <laughs> Ballet gives an excellent idea for this important historical fact. The music was beautiful. I liked it very much. It was very nice, and the artists have worked out every detail. The choreography was excellent. I really liked it. There were so many beautiful artists in the performance. All of them were just magnificent. The management of the Carlo Felice Theater praised the performance of the Astana Opera. Kazakhstan's team was invited once again. Next time, the Astana Opera plans to show the Nutcracker and the Swan Lake in Italy. These were the main news for the past week on Kazakh TV. You're watching the news summary from Kazakhstan, my home country. I'm Jana Sagantikova. I'll see you soon. Have a good and productive week. Goodbye.